Would, would you please stand? Good morning and welcome. It's lovely to see you all here this morning. It feels like summer. We're getting towards Christmas and it's beginning to feel like that. I want to especially welcome visitors this morning and particularly little Mia and her family and friends who've come to support her for the baptism today. Also, we have Dr. Christine Bundell, Reverend Mar Mar Marie Wilson and Reverend Rob Douglas who are conducting their life and witness survey. So the Uniting Church in Australia, WA Synod, is carrying out the Congregational Life and Witness consultations for All Saints today. Uh, some of you may have spoken to them before the service. Um, members who have not yet completed the Life and Witness questionnaire, please take a copy from the table at the door of the sanctuary on your way out and there's a box there where you can uh, slot your completed questionnaires. Anyone wishing to discuss the questionnaire with Marie or Rob may do so after the service in the page room. Um, and uh, don't forget to complete your questionnaire before you leave. So thank you. And please join us for tea or coffee in the hall after the service. We have been preparing ourselves for Christmas. And today we remember Joseph and Mary. We remember that the shepherds were just doing their job in the neighbourhood all the time and the wise men were coming from afar. Part of the uh, celebration is about the coming of the light and this is a dimension of our uh, tradition. And so we light candles to remind ourselves that God gives us light, if we can just light them. Yep. Isn't technology wonderful? <laughs> and we light this candle to represent that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And so we come. We might come in a rush, we might come feeling slightly unprepared, we might come wondering whether we have everything we need and yet we come because we gather as the people of God to celebrate that in Christ God has come to us. Let us pray. Most loving God, there are times when we are so full of what is happening that we fail to notice that you have quietly been present all the time. There are times when we sit and we want a dazzling revelation and we are not aware that your presence can come as closely as our own breath. 
Come to us, each one, O God, as we need you to come today. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For this service, we're having a, a number of lesser-known carols, and they have a kind of a, a worldish theme, although we're only having snapshots of the world, and Leanne will be sharing something about her recent journeys. This cross I'm wearing is made of olive wood from the Mount of Olives, at least that's what it said on the packet. <laughs> so so we, we, we uh, remember that the Christ who came to a particular place in the Spirit comes to many places. And we sing first from the Basque region in what we would call Spain. come forward and stand here. Friends, the church council of this congregation has received a request for baptism from Matthew and Haley for their child Mia. This important decision has been prayerfully and carefully considered and I'm glad to welcome them here today. Yeah, if you stand so they can see you. Uh, we want you to be able to see folks. Um, there are family members streaming this service in other parts of Australia and there may be yet more streaming the service or we'll watch it later uh, from the recording. We want them to see. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Apostle Paul said, 
Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Baptism is God's gift. It is the sign by which the Spirit of God joins people to Jesus Christ and incorporates them into his body, the church. In his own baptism in the Jordan by John, Jesus identified himself with humanity and its brokenness and sin. That baptism was completed in his death and resurrection. By God's grace, baptism plunges us into the faith of Jesus Christ so that whatever is his may be called ours. By water and the Spirit we are claimed as God's own and set free from the power of sin and death. Thus claimed by God, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit that we may live as witnesses to Jesus Christ, share in his ministry in the world and grow to maturity, awaiting with hope the day of our Lord Jesus. Matt and Haley, what do you ask of God's church for Mia? In the light of the covenant promise and of your request, I ask you now, do you believe that the gospel enables you to turn from the darkness of evil and to walk in the light of Christ? We do. Mia, may the Lord open your ears to hear his word and your mouth to proclaim his praise. I need the thing now. Where am I? There I am. Let us confess the faith into which we were baptized. Do you believe in God? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of life, through the breaking of waters and the coming of the Spirit, you bring us new birth. You give us the living water which becomes in us an eternal spring, quenching our thirst, flowing through us and refreshing us for eternal life. Washed and cleansed, we are called into service with Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, bless this water and she who is to be baptized in it, that Mia may be born anew, live in your light all her days, 
and come to share your likeness. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Mia, you can say things to the back of people's heads as well as to the front. Mia, for you, Jesus Christ has come, has lived, has suffered. For you, he endured the agony of Gethsemane and the darkness of Calvary. For you, he uttered the cry, it is accomplished. For you, he triumphed over death. For you, he prays at God's right hand. All for you, Mia, even before you were born. In baptism, the word of the apostle is confirmed. We love because God first loved us. And now, I, I, we only do this once, okay? So this is a one-take moment. You can come close if you'd like to. If you hold her up. Mia, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mia, from this day forward, the sign of the cross is upon you. Mia is now received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church according to Christ's command. No, don't get it yet. It's, it's not over yet. Let us sing together. Matt and Haley, I ask you now to respond to God's graciousness to Mia by making these solemn promises. Will you provide for Mia a Christian home of love and trust? With God's help, we will. Will you set before Mia the example of a Christian life and will you pray that she will learn the way of Christ? Will you encourage Mia to grow within the fellowship of the church so that she may come to faith in Christ? With God's help, we will. Okay. Adelaide, you have been asked to take a special interest in Mia and to support Matt and Haley as they fulfil their promises. Will you give them your love and support? Oops. I charge you, the people of this congregation, to maintain the life of worship and service that this child Mia and all the children among you may grow in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ 
with the knowledge and love of God. And at this point, the minister left a slide out. So I'm going to read it on your behalf. With God's help, we will live out our baptism as a loving community in Christ, nurturing one another in faith, upholding one another in prayer, and encouraging one another in service. Let us pray. God of love, we rejoice again to receive your grace in word and sacrament. We have heard your call and are made new by your spirit. Guide and guard Mia. May your love hold her, your truth guide her, your joy delight her. Bless Matt. Haley, Otis and Lenny, that their home may be secure and happy. Give to their family wisdom and courage, laughter and peace, and the love that endures all things through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that candle's for you to take and get. Okay. One of the calls of this season is to immerse ourselves in the Christmas story. So it's good to know that Mia's doing that right now. And now a carol from Poland. Advent is a time of preparation. You might say we have to go on journeys. They might be trips to the shops. They might be trips to visit family. There are many small and large journeys at this time. And during this time, we remember the importance of hope, peace, joy, and love. And when we light those candles for those things, uh, perhaps you can keep the kids on a tighter leash. <laughs> <laughs> well, journeys often involve travelling. And some of you will be aware of the Black Pearl Network. And this has recently involved some travelling. Leanne, what can you tell us about this journey? 
Where did you go? We went all over Papua, West Papua, South Papua, Central Papua, the Middle Mountains region of Papua. We were gone for 22 days, 19 flights, four ferries, one cancelled credit card. But it was an amazing trip. Why did you go? We went to cement the friendships we have with the people of Papua, to encourage them, both the teachers and the students and the people who are working with us, and to establish new initiatives in response to requests from the Papuan people. We have such wonderful friends there and they really rely on us to encourage them, to give them support and to keep the work going there. So who did you see in particular? Well, you probably recognise some of these people. You may recognise Aruna with the big smile who was here in 2010 and stayed with Rachel Brayshaw for three months. You might also recognise Robbie who stayed with the Descant family before they returned to the United States. And see the little person next to Robbie? That's his daughter, Reva, who's four and who's a wonderful dancer. And so wherever we went in Papua, we caught up with old friends. Aruna just happened to be in Sorong on business for one night, the same night that we happened to be in Sorong. And so he came out to dinner with us. Robbie has a class in Wamana. He has many children, more than 75 children in his classes. He teaches English and they gave us a wonderful welcome there. We ran into lots of old friends and these are just two of them. In the course of our service today, Leanne and I will have a number of conversations back and forth about her particular trip to remind us that we are part of a world movement in response to the coming of Christ. Let us pray. O oh God, there are times when our focus is very narrow on our own concerns, on our own troubles. There are times when we make little space for you and what you might be speaking to us. There are times when we make little space for others. Forgive us, O oh God, when our focus is too narrow and we fail to see that all people are your children. Help us to let go of those moments, words, memories, hurtful experiences that we need to put behind us. Help us to embrace your compassion and love and help us to seek the support of those who can help us that we may experience the joy, the renewal, the hope of your forgiveness. And we in turn may become a truly forgiving people. We bring before you those personal confessions which we need to name to you and to none other. And we ask that you will hear us, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus Christ did not come into the world to condemn the world. Christ came into the world so that in him we might have life. Life in abundance. Hear the words of Jesus Christ for all of us. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now a hymn, a carol, <laughs> from the West Indies.
Oh dear. There's a little bit of chaos in the neighborhood, I think. Oh dear. We'll just take a moment to uh, talk, to, to sit. I've left the candle flame in there, if anybody knows where it is to get me the candle flame. Um, no, no, it's, it's okay. The introduction today is that we are remembering the fact that God can come to us wherever we are in the world. The God we worship in Jesus Christ is not confined to one place. Sorry. And now we remind ourselves that at the heart of our celebration is love. And we will light the other candles shortly. I thought we were doing them now, but, you know, the minister got it wrong. Um, and uh, so I'm just saying these words at this point. And uh, we come now to uh, a, a tune composed, written, words written in Scotland, and a tune composed in Australia. Is this right? Is that what you're expecting? Oh, good. <laughs> During the season of Advent, we light candles and we light first the three candles for the last or the previous Sundays of Advent. Our first candle was for hope and we celebrate the hope that God gives as we anticipate the future and in particular the coming of Christ. Our second candle is for peace, which we hope for and assert even in a conflicted and warlike world. Our candle for last week is the candle for joy, because the coming of Christ and the coming of God is an occasion for joy. One of the things that our readings today refer to is the significance of names. Sometimes it's the name that is given to a person and sometimes it's a name that becomes a description of a person. Names were regarded very important, as very important in the Bible and our readings echo one particular name. Leanne, who is this child? And what is the significance of his name? This is Gabriel Mika Kamesfle. 
Gabrielle was born on our second day in Papua to one of our Black Pearl English course teachers, Rita. And in Papua, a name is so important. It's considered to be a gift and it has great value and great meaning. And this is the fourth child that we have been involved in naming in Papua. There is a little girl called Fran, who's named after Fran Blampy from Trinity North Congregation, because her dad, Roy Tagori, stayed with the Blampy family when he was an APSEP student. There's a little boy called Daniel Joshua, who was named by the Black Pearl team when we were in Papua in 2018, because he was born while we were there and they invited us to name him. So we named him Daniel as a name of faith and strength and courage. There's another little girl, her name is Jen, and she's named Jen after Jan Thorpe of the Greenwood Congregation, because her mum stayed with Jan and Brian Thorpe when, she, when they, she was an APSEP student. But this little one, born while we were in Papua this time, was named Gavriel by his mum, and she invited us to give him his middle name. So he's Gavriel Mika, and we named him Mika because that is how the Papuans pronounce Micah, as of the book of Micah in the Bible. And you will all remember Micah 6, 8. And what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your Lord. And that Bible passage became the theme of our visit to Papua this year. So it seemed right to name him Mika. And Rita was delighted with that name. He actually also happens to have a nickname. His nickname is Vamos because any of you who follow the soccer will know that the World Cup is big news just at the moment and it was on while we were in Papua and I believe he's an Argentinian soccer player who has no peer and so hence his name may be Gavriel Mika but he's called Vamos. <laughs> so we hear from our scripture today the readings about one with a special name. Sometimes the meaning is deep. <laughs> Prepare the way, O Holy Spirit. Make us ready to receive, receive the Christ, the Christ who, who comes. comes. Our first reading is from the Old Testament, Isaiah 7, verses 10 to 16. The ancient kingdom of Israel was often subject to threats from surrounding powers. In the time of the prophet Isaiah of Jerusalem, the potential invader was Assyria. Isaiah was closely related to the court of King Ahaz. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a, sign of, <coughs> ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David. Is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before those two kings you are undreadably deserted. And our gospel reading today comes from Matthew 1, 8, 18 to 25. Matthew's Gospel begins with a list of the ancestors of Joseph and therefore Jesus. It begins with Abraham and includes David, who was the great king, who was a model for the Messiah. This ancestry reveals several things. First, that Joseph belongs to David's line. Secondly, God often worked through women who had married into the line. And finally, that counting the number of generations Joseph Child would signify a new beginning in God's work. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, 
she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as a wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had given birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. For the gospel you have given, we praise you, praise you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Our final candle for Advent is the candle for love. And it was out of love that Christ came into the world. Every now and then the presbytery, the regional body of the church comes and does a consultation with the congregation and that's happening today. I feel as though I'm sitting an exam and I just <laughs> keep making multiple mistakes. Um, please don't take it out on the congregation, the minister's lapses. So in Advent we take the time to prepare ourselves for Emmanuel, for the one named Jesus who remains present with us as a life-giving spirit, to use Paul's word. And we go, if you like, on a spiritual journey again to the place where Christ was born. Journeys don't happen without planning. However, unexpected things can happen. Leanne, what happened to you on this journey, or some of it, and how were you received? It's always a wonderful thing to go to Papua. It's very hard to walk humbly with your God when you're being fated at every turn. You will notice I received some wonderful gifts. Many wonderful gifts. In fact, five of us came back with 60 kilograms of gifts. Our excess luggage cost us a fortune. 
Sadly, by the time we got back, 13 of our huge bowls, we were given 15 in all. They're a symbol of value. They're part of the bride price. They're a symbol of welcome. And they're about this big and made of china. We were given 15 altogether during our travels. Each one weighs a ton. And 13 were shattered when we opened our cases on the way back, which was a great shame, but um, they were precious and uh, it, they didn't quite make it back, but we received the gift that was given with them. We received the gift of welcome and of love. Everywhere we went, we were given headdresses, woven grass bags, bowls, many, many tokens of appreciation because it means a lot to the people to know that they have our support. They feel downtrodden by colonial power. Their situation's not much different to our Australian Aboriginal situation was about 100 years ago. But the mistakes are very current there. And so these people have cried out for our help and we're trying to help in every way we can. And the help we're giving them is making a difference. 40% of our past APSEP students have since represented Papua or Indonesia overseas, 40%. One young man who's 24 is now the Deputy Ambassador of Indonesia in Cambodia. Coming here, receiving the love of this congregation and the nurturing that comes with it has changed lives. And so when we go to Papua, the people really thank us. They want to say thank you to all of you, but I and a few others are the only ones that made it. But I want to convey their thanks to you because we were overwhelmed by the welcome we received. In one port, our ferry was three hours late docking. It didn't dock till nine o'clock at night. But a huge crowd of Black Pearl English students, children, had waited in the rain on the, on the dock for us for three hours. They hadn't eaten, they were wet and cold, but they waited until we docked so that they could give us a proper welcome. Every welcome included dances and music and presentations of their fantastic English skills. And it was just very moving everywhere we went. So it was unexpected and it was just such an emotional experience for all of us. And we want to thank you all because we couldn't do it without you right behind us. And I thank you for that. The love that came down at Christmas was a risk-taking love, a vulnerable love, just as in fact most love is vulnerable. God allows us choices and we might well ask the question, what if Joseph had said no or Mary had said no? We come towards the celebration of Christmas to see the ways that God takes the risk on us. God chooses always to be for us because that is the gift of love. A carol from England. The significance of Jesus 
was summed up in those words, God is with us. They're words about connections. How will we be with one another? How will we be with those further away? Leanne, how important are these connections you have with Papua? The connections are the most important thing about our relationship with Papua. The fellowship, the relationships. We are family to those people in Papua who have been here. They stay in our families and they become a part of us. They become a part of our congregation. Many of them are listening to our service right now. Many of them live stream our services every Sunday morning. We actually have um, an extra uh, inducement for those people to tune in because Ian's diction is so clear. They love to listen to him. They can practice their English because they can understand Ian. So we know that many of them tune in every Sunday to our services. But we have connections with lots of people. We have connections with other organisations. When we go to Papua and we deliver the Days for Girls talks and the kits that are provided so that girls can manage their menstruation with confidence so that they don't miss school because they don't have what they need, we don't, it's not our organisation, but the Days for Girls organisation needs somebody going into developing countries to deliver their product. So that's what we do. And the girls appreciate it enormously, and their mothers. We have hundreds of people flock to those talks. It's, it's an amazing experience to be there, to see the connections all around us. We meet with the local government. We meet with the church councils. We meet with their presbyteries and we make agreements and arrangements with all of them. We don't just work with them, we encourage them to work together and we make connections between them so that they can work together in the future. So it is really a big network and it starts here with this little congregation. And the network's not just in Papua, the network is here in Western Australia too. I mean, a lot of you will remember many years ago when Ken Callahan's book was all so popular and we were all talking about the regional church. It's happened here through this particular ministry. Greenwood, Duncraig, Wembley Downs, these other western suburbs ch churches are almost as familiar to me now as you are because we work so closely together in this ministry. It has built relationships here in Perth as well as overseas. It's a wonderful family and we feel like a part of the big church family. It sounds as though the gifts go both ways. The gifts really do go both ways and you have to be very gracious sometimes to give full appreciation to any gift and what you can't see is all those little grass fibres hanging in Jeff's face tickling his eyes and his nose but he wore it all day that we were with this congregation because it was given as a gift when he arrived and I have to show you also what he has in his bag. We were all given one of these beautiful woven grass bags, handmade, hand embroidered, but you may wonder what's inside. It rains a lot in Papua, and this is a Papuan umbrella. <laughs> now, this is a mini version, it only covers your head, but they have very large ones which you open and they cover your whole body. So, you see, we weren't just given glamorous gifts like that magnificent hat. We were given useful gifts and we brought them all home. Leanne, what's it like to say goodbye? It's actually very difficult to say goodbye because when we leave, we never know how long it's going to be before we see our friends again. They keep in touch with us. We try to keep in touch with them. When we left in 2019, we had no idea it would be three years before we could get back to Papua. Nobody knows what the future holds, but through information technology, we can stay a little closer than we prefer, were before. Uh, Zoom has brought us connections that we never dreamed of. Our Papuan partners used to await our visits and then we used to deliver our decisions and implement our plans. Now we meet together via Zoom every month. Our Papuan members are there just as much as our Australian members. Decisions are made together. Uh, they are part of our plans. We don't need to deliver them at all. They're already happening. So 
It has been wonderful for us and although it's terrible to say goodbye, we know that we'll stay in close touch. They are part of our family. The word goodbye, of course, is a contraction in English of the words God be with you. And we say that as we consider this particular conversation about West Papua and your journey. Thank you, Leanne. A reminder about the Christmas Bowl for those who are seeking it. Its theme this year is Love Your Neighbour as Yourself. Let us pray. O oh God, you call us to remember that we are part of the world family. And so we pray for those of our family who are suffering from war or famine or displacement or landslide, political unrest or the consequences of changes in climate. We pray for the leaders of the world, for those who have positions of power, that they might use their positions for good. We pray for our own country, in particular at this time, those who are continuing to live with the suffering caused by flooding. We pray, O oh God, for those closer to home, those we know who are living with frailty or illness or undergoing treatment, those who are celebrating special events, marriages, births, baptisms, those who are mourning recent loss, and we remember the families of Neil Bloomfield and Don Wilson at this time. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless the life of this congregation, in particular those involved in the current consultation, elders and church councillors, and we pray for the presbytery and for the consultation team Chris and Mari and Rob. And we pray for the Dongra and Geraldton Lighthouse congregations. And we pray that our connections with the GKI in Papua and the GKI in Bali may be gifts that are mutually shared. Hear all these prayers, O oh God, and hear us as we join in the prayer which Jesus gave us that we might say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Advent season of preparation for Christmas is a season for remembering connections remembering that God is with us and calls us to love one another. And so we sing our final hymn, written by someone born in the UK, now resident in America. Oh, how joyfully.
Go now in peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you here and far this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.